Hello and welcome to 30 frames a second. That's right. I don't need to tell you what day it is. It's Takeover Tuesday. I think you know that. Do not leave us. Don't you turn that station. We have an incredible show for you today. Today the women take over. Nat's in the control room where we like him. Let's start the show. Welcome to 30 frames a second. <laughs>
Hello. You know, I have a love and hate relationship with Nat's openings. <laughs> they are so talented, because we can all admit he's a genius, but it always gives away who our guest is. <laughs> yes, we have Lewis from Harlem's um, Hapidashery. I'm going to get to that in one minute. Let me start with our Veronica Kitt. You all know her. She is the founder of the People's Film Festival. She is a producer, host, director, friend, um, all around Renaissance woman, and our um, political, I will keep you straight, person of the team. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Veronica. The singer. We will. Uh, she said singer for those of you who didn't hear under your breath, but that's another story. Um, we will be joined shortly by Nure Well. She will be coming from another event. Um, so she'll be sneaking in, but let's get to our guest host, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Oh, we are so excited to have you here at 30 I'm Frames to be a here. Second. It's going to be fun. Yes, and I dressed up for you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Always be thank TMZ you very ready. much. You <laughs> Did go. you say TMZ ready? TMZ ready. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lewis, now, your title is trend specialist. Yes. Am I correct? Cool. What does that mean, trend specialist? So, trend specialist means that I I am the final say of what comes in the boutique, you know, so that means that if you come to me and you say I want to place my things in it, I will look it over and see if you work with our aesthetics. Uh, if there is no holes, no holes, no also sewing, stitching, and things of that nature, then we'll has to be of a certain quality. It has to be. Now again, we are discussing be. Harlem haberdashery, so we want to be sure uh, you know exactly where that is. Yes. Now. Um, what type of clothing? Is it open to everyone and everything um, clothing-wise, the store? So our boutique is a family-owned boutique first. Mm -hmm. And we have nine family members under the boutique umbrella who are all brand creators of themselves. Wow. So we have maybe seven to nine different creations of brands under our umbrella in the boutique. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to just keep it with all of our, you know, mm -hmm. our brands just so we don't have to worry about anybody else, mm -hmm. you know, say, hey, my stuff is in there too, but no, mm -hmm. it's all the family that's in there mm -hmm. now. Yes, so. mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. And for people who are looking to put their things in, do they need to have manufacturers? The, the problem I see with a lot of uh, newer designers, they'll do a fashion show, you'll want that one piece, and then they have to try to go back and buy the fabric. Because, of course, they have to stockpile fabric, mm -hmm. you know, and then they're making one or two pieces. Does your store first allow one or two pieces? Is that fine? And with people, do they have to, you know, have manufacturers? Do they have to be able to supply you with different sizes? How does that work? Well, we would prefer you supply us with different sizes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't suggest that you come to us with one or two pieces. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if I sell you on the first day, then what am I going to do on the third day? There we go. <laughs> you know, so, and when you have case and troubles where you don't have a manufacturer with our brand that created our boutique, 5001 Flavors, we can create your, your one-of-a-kind pieces for you. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. that that is absolutely Nuray. We are so glad you uh, joined us here. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Nuray is the host of the Thrift and Chicks Vintage podcast, and she's our uh, contemporary reseller as well. So we're happy to have that fashion, that fashion sense here. That's great, ladies. Did you have any questions before I bogart? Because I have so many questions oh, for Louis. But if he can just kind of like go back a bit in terms of what Harlem haberdashery is mm -hmm. the haberdashery meaning basically everything that well, you, you remember the buttons and the correct and I'm glad that you, that you said mm -hmm, that too mm -hmm. because that's what actually happens we have we are centered on Lenox Avenue between 122nd and 123rd Street one of the major streets of Harlem now definitely for bars and restaurants but we have our wonderful family-owned boutique and Haberdashery means custom or bespoke clothier. Oh. So since everything in that boutique is made by us here in the South of Bronx in our loft, that is haberdashery. Yes. Now when you travel, you know, Europe and all these places obviously that you've been, most people think of it as a notions of potions where we go and get our buttons and our zippers. Mo and another set thinks it's hats, you know, for mm -hmm. fine gentlemen. But That's what again, yeah, ours yeah. is custom and bespoke clothier. And since we make it, we are haberdashery. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Love, love it. it. Yes. And in Harlem, and in, 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 in such in um especially when you look at what's happening in Harlem today. Mm -hmm. And here it is, we have you there yes. maintaining yes. the history 
we can take it all the way back to um, the Harlem Renaissance. Correct. When you think, of, right, and so when I look at the clothing, I look at the styles, especially the men uh, clothing wear and the designs that you have, mm -hmm. vintage. When you walk into the shop, you just walk back in time. We, and we try to keep our fashion statements trending, mm -hmm. not trendy, because that's I love that. here July 5th yes. and God July that. 19th. I love that. So we yeah. keep it trending, something that's going to be on trend mm -hmm. for years to come. I, we don't believe in date stamps and times put on our clothing because again, if you have something that said 1988, then why are you wearing it in 2012? Mm -hmm. I imagine, I, I'm, I'm happy that you keep your clothes well-mannered and things like that, but sweetie, if it says 1989, and if unless it's your birth date, I really don't want to see it on your clothes. <laughs> hey. You know. You know so right. we keep it we keep it like that. Like the eight ball that. jacket. The eight what, ball what's jacket? that rainbow that jacket? I have the rain the, the members rainbow. only. Yeah, I'm the last member. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the race says. Yes. I gotta got so you know what? With things like members only where they kept it really cute with just the members mm -hmm. only here mm -hmm. and Classic. kept the creative details in it, that's something fine. Okay. But when we got zebra stripes, oh. you know, with a red polka dot, I don't even wear polka dots in my socks because I don't mm. want to look like I got a big old ankle. You know, so mm. I don't do polka dots. But you know, when you have things like that that are making too much of a detail, first off, you might be putting yourself in a certain um, time of season. You know, because there's only times when we can wear linen, and that means after July 4th. Yes. Wow. Until August you should, 31st. No, you don't. You, we don't you wear know, linen we, in we the winter. We don't wear patent leather after we wear patent leather from Thanksgiving to Easter Sunday morning. Now, Easter Sunday mm. night, take them patent leather shoes off and get yourself ready for the next season. So there's seasons of things to that nature. When you but it's so funny he's saying there. that wow. because a lot of times you hear people say, well, don't you wear white after Labor Day or whatever, you know, stockings. But then and, our summer but ends on the 21st. So what are we talking about? Are we talking about tradition or are we talking about um, just uh, old time fads or say you know that we you know said in the past you know like what are we talking about are we really talking about style are we really talking about tradition or we're we just talking about folklore I think those that still to this day are stuck on we don't wear white after Labor Day mm -hmm. those are people who got the home training from their parents and their parents' parents. Because if you actually look at calendar, on calendar, we don't end summer until September 21st, September 22nd. So you're trying to tell me because it's Labor Day happened at the beginning of September, I kept wearing my white right. shoes, still during summer. What, now what if it's 90 degrees? Yeah. I'm supposed to put on some black? No. What if you're Lisa Ray? <laughs> and now they even <laughs> say white winter white. white. There is a winter there, there's white. There's a winter it's a white. Ivory. It's, it's an a ivory. Shell. It's an A crew. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, those are things that I wear. So my whole change is I actually dress from shoe up. You know, okay. so I so look up. I. I get up. I get up in the morning. I walk up my stairs. I look outside my window and I see what the weather is like to know what shoe really? I want to put on that ground. Wow. Yes. You know, so that's how you kind of keep the white things. And you know, you're not gonna wear white if it's about to rain. No. You know, that's the first or thing that's going to be dirty. Or snow, or muddy, right. dirty. Right. Right. Yes. So, that's, exactly. so those yes. are the things. So I think that most people now are starting, especially our fashionistas and our fashion men, they're starting to look at things that way of, okay, is this the right weather to wear this instead of season? Because I, I see people wear white all day. I saw somebody in white pants yesterday. Mm. When well, Florida, so, you, they do. I, I, coming from Florida yeah, and Miami, they no, do. No. They but they what do. about men with snakeskin shoes? Well, why I was are they told why. Are you flirting with one? No, Walk no. Away. Leave him alone. <laughs> See, there she go. And that's what I meant. You would hear yes, you people say, joint? don't, 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 don't talk to a man that's yeah, we wearing snake shoes and shoes. You better stay you away from him. Well, because what year was he born? <laughs> well, that would no. be a Harlem now, thing. Now, a loafer. Is it a Harlem thing? No, a loafer now, with a big leg linen pant. Okay, crocodile. Okay. Okay. Yes. Crocodile okay. shoes. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. Crocodile. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. In a loafer. Snake skin. Not, not a high boot. Where the ankle come up and it's pointed, but a low I think fur a would be nice. In a, yeah, in a, uh, in a croc well, or a so snake skin. Or tell all men not to be wearing any more pointed shoes. Okay. Um, <laughs> unless you're home on the range. <laughs> Don't put no pointy shoes on. I'm glad you said on. that. <laughs> no, and you know, as a woman, this is going to sound crazy. Mm. There are two things I look at when a man approaches me. Of course, your breath can't smell. That's a given. Um, mm -hmm. Teeth and face, okay. that's a given. It has to be. Nails have to be clean. Right. They don't have to be. Uh, and one really long, walk away. Oh. I know, I can't tell. <laughs> but shoes. That's My father shoe. always taught me to look at a man's shoes Correct. and look at the heel of the shoe. Correct. Is it worn down? Mm. Is it, oh, I'm not kidding. That's exactly where I go when someone goes to talk to me. And it's mm. no shade. It just means that he probably walks a lot, takes yeah. the train a lot. 
or don't have another, <laughs> pair, or, of or don't have another pair of shoes. Because well, I take the train a lot, but I get my me, heels. I got over 200 pairs of shoes. I, oh. If he is 11 and a half, he can have at least a pair. Oh, my you, goodness. We cannot be walking in the Where station. You, you got to allow your those, shoes. Lewis? Oh, my goodness. I, I'm so embarrassed of my home. Mm. I really No, can. but are they like in the bags that are hanging? No, no, no. These are in boxes. But box. clear, wow. you can't see them then. Oh, but I know what color box, what color shoes are in each box. No, so I each love shoe it. Is, no, no, yes, it has to, I know where all my brown shoes is. I know where all my blue shoes. I know where green. My green and my blue are actually in the same box. Wow. I don't have too many no, of I have to see mine. But mine have to be clear where I can oh, see. Oh, no, I know where they are. But talking about shoes, mm -hmm. let's go back a bit. On 125th Street, I believe on Lenox, no, 7th Avenue, British Walker. Back in the day. Shoes. Mm -hmm. Iconic. Mm -hmm talk about that because here it is now we've done transition and what we knew to be a part of our style and fashion is no longer there well your neighbor mm -hmm. who is yes who is your neighbor his name is dapper dan love him yes i know mm -hmm. so son. that's a delani a throwback yes, that's correct me. yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so his place, that corner is becoming really something quite Correct. special. It is, and I, I, I was happy just to have another person walking in the same ministry as I, mm. I say. That's the way. And that is to get our young men and our young women fly. It yes. didn't have to be whoever it was. Yes. I just wanted somebody else to help me. Yes. Just in case I didn't do that navy blue jacket, maybe he did it. Visual yeah. so is I just so wanted important. Somebody to be on the block that was Don't judge healthy. me how I look. Visual it, is important. And it's always yeah. important. Excuse me. It always you know is. what? I'm sorry. I don't because I know <laughs> she's going to bring you back. But when you said fly, I thought about Missy Elliott. Super yes. duper fly. One Did y'all create that? Yes. She you created that. Amazing. Yes. Did you that really? Wow. Super suit. Wow. Yes. Me and Most super fly. Most of the things that you have seen fly. out there mm -hmm. for the last 28 years, thank wow. God, coming May will be 5,001 flavors, yes. everything. Yes. You know, the balloon things, all the stuff from Puffy and Mason, all that, all this, yes. all that. Wow. Yeah, that was awesome. I didn't yes. know that. Wow, that's that was history right yes. there. How did you yeah. design them? Did you look at them and say, oh, I want them to have this, or did you hear the music and say, this is what needs to be? Or were mm. we just going for something that was so unique? Because that outfit Missy had was just unbelievable. Well, so it comes, when it comes to video and things like that, there is a director who has his ideal of what he wants to mm. see come across in visual from the song that you're singing. Mm -hmm. uh, most times there are celebrities that have their own stylist. There are clients that come to us just one-on-one -on -one who wants us to just make something for them because they don't have time for a stylist. When it came to Missy Super Duper Fly, I think that may have actually been created by June Ambrose and my business partner, Guy Wood. You know, uh, mostly would. everything Guy would do, uh, he's helping the stylist anyway. Because Guy is a beast of all mankind. Wow. Like his fashion statements are just incredible every morning. Every morning. I, I wake up to say, what would Guy would wear? Mm -hmm. And then I put a Lewis Johnson twist on it. But going back to that, Guy would probably be the most person who would always say, why don't you flip it this way? Because that's going to make more sense. Or that's going to make it stand out a little differently. So it was always a creative thing between stylists and our, our business. And how long there. has the store been there? The store is celebrating eight years, May. All wow. right. Yes. Okay. Yes. We are happy for that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And for the holidays, mm -hmm. moving forward, because we are in that holiday season, um, for our, our young ladies, is there anything that you see really fashion forward right now that's just, it seems to me I'm seeing a lot of leopard which I'm not a fan of mm -hmm. or animal print which there's nothing against it but I'm seeing a lot of that is there anything that's leading up to killing that turkey that's gonna be on your table okay. on Thanksgiving <laughs> All right. because if I see one good leopard uh -huh. the day of Thanksgiving they might be the next dinner day's dinner you, okay. know, you know we do the leftovers <laughs> right. I might put them in that big old gumbo pot mm -hmm. and okay. put them together I think that when you are looking at holidays that are set holidays, that are known holidays for different details, mm -hmm. kind of create your image oh, so that they know you are celebrating these holidays. I'm happy all the day long. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it comes to Thanksgiving, I got all my mannequins in there and stories of oranges and burnt oranges and, you know, greens mm. and things like that leading up to harvest. Mm -hmm. yes. going into mm -hmm. the, the mustards, yes. yes. oh, the cranberries. You know, so when, you, when you're thinking about things like that, I would definitely, without being a Christmas tree, putting on all green or putting mm -hmm. on green and red, because that's so passe, um, you just start looking at things that work with those blacks, golds. 
sometimes silver, depending on what time of day. I, I would say silver between four, you know, daytime to four thirty. Put your golds on after four thirty and on for your evening events. Mm. Wow. You know, so I would always do things that kind of create the ideal of what season we are in. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. I do. I love that. Because a lot of times I always ask, what are we wearing? What is the season? And since you're the trend set of understanding how people's behaviors change, I never think about um, the festive part. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it becomes overwhelming. You know, like especially when you look at um, Kwanzaa. I was just going to say, um, and as everyone's wearing African, 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 yeah, African, yeah, okay. she celebrates Kwanzaa over Christmas. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. do. Do you dress more in a I do. African? Well, during for the when I have my ceremony, Sorry. we okay. I, I do. Do you mm -hmm. head wrap? Yes, I do. I love I it. Know. Yes, I do. Okay, yes, yes. all but right. But even the simple suit of today, the, yeah. the go-to everyday black suit with a white glove. Mm -hmm. Everybody even should have a go-to suit. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to hairdress and right. then add a brooch to it, that shows right. holiday, it shows festive, and it's it shows not celebration. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, because sometimes you kind of like... Okay, so then I just got to I gotta talk about the, 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 the giraffe in the room. That's what I'm going to call it, the elephant in the room. Okay. Um, gentlemen walking, with, walking the streets with their pants oh. way below they should be. Well, you know what? I will say this. I thank God for them because they are the reasons why we opened up our shop eight years ago. Right. Okay. I had even, I never, even, as a man, 52 years old, I never even knew we had underwear called Alan Solly. They're sold at <laughs> J.C. Penney's. But I found that out when I saw a young man sitting outside of Red Rooster having lunch with the most beautiful woman, and she was dressed so impeccable. And then I, as I came up on them coming from behind, I laughed up, well, Alan Solly? Those are underwear? Mm. And I couldn't understand why am I seeing his brother's underwear and then his dark blue trousers. He had wow. on Timberlands and they were scuffed. You know, so it was people like him who, who made mm -hmm. us open up the boutique. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but it's people like us that are here to not talk about you as bad, but to bring you in to share with you why we are talking about you so that when you do walk out, you will not be talked about any further except for how fly he looks when he walked out. Right, because yeah. there are options. Mm. There are. It's there a belt. are options. It's you can belt. still be fly. You said a, it's called a belt. It's called a belt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, that's a simple, I mean, that's the simplest option. Yes. Yes. Why not? No, wear but a belt? I mean, I think young men think that's a trend, and I got to be in on it to be some. But I believe they really believe that. that mm -hmm. And I'm trying to say that they can be fashion forward without showing their buttocks. You, mm -hmm. you can, and you should. I, there's, that's a growing thing. I, from my education I got, I, it came from the brothers that were in jail that could not wear belts. Right. Because what they were the doing belt. was removing right. things that you don't right. hang yourself and look mm -hmm. nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and so um, these young men that are taking that in jail trend to bring outside, I'm not sure why they're doing it. I think it's kind of tacky. I know a lot of my clients that do come in, the first thing I do is I, I look them up and down. Mm. Wear your belt, you got belt loops, and why you ain't got no belt on? Mm. You know, and if the pants are fitting you where you don't need it, then take the belt loops off. Remove them. Mm -hmm. Why you got on white socks with colored shoes? I blame got women. every color sock out there. Don't wear the white socks with no colored shoes. You know, so I, I, I get on to people. I blame women, Lewis. Mm -hmm. I, I, bl I blame that if every woman said, we will no longer talk to any man <laughs> that I can see their underwear, I believe they would stop doing it. Yeah. I think it's an age thing, though, because, you know, because I really wouldn't call it a trend because it's something that every young guy, like maybe starting in middle school, mm -hmm. you know, to their early, maybe mid-20s, they do that. Mm -hmm. so I really don't think it's a, I hope, but I'm seeing 30 When I was in middle school, I remember sorry. boys mm -hmm. wearing their pants like that. And there may be some truth to that if women stop. But we're talking about little girls. Well, how about mama? They think it's cute. Let me look mm. you up and down before you walk out this door like No, yeah. they do it. They, they leave. Yeah, yeah, but they take them off when mama. As soon as mama yeah. leaves, yeah. yeah. When they get to school, they no. take it off. See, they didn't have Helen Marie as their mother. Oh, or Hattie <laughs> Elizabeth. Yep, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about the cake. We saw an incredible cake. <laughs> yes. I want to know about that marriage, because you said oh, there wow. was a, a wedding. Yes, so when we opened the boutique, just under eight years now. When we opened the boutique, there was a young lady named Arlene, Arlinda, I'm sorry, and she had a, has a line called Sophista Funk, the original skirting company. Mm -hmm. So she was all about skirtings and just light tops, but it was all about these uh, avant-garde, these skirts that come with petticoats underneath them to take, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. that you can wear in three different ways. It was either, also a dress, my mommy and me, it was one skirt that a little girl could wear all the way up to a grown-up, depending on sizing. Wow. Don't get me wrong. You know, and so 
she was already somebody that I was working with when I was back in my days, styling Faith Evans and Foxy and Total and things like that. She was one of the ladies I'd go to for my female wear. And so when we opened, we decided, you know what, let's do something that nobody else has ever thought of. You know, we are a predominantly male boutique accessorized by lady. And so we decided we wanted to marry a female brand because she was in our boutique. So we actually had all the bridesmaids in Sophistifunk skirts wow. with um, fascinators and gloves of different colors. Some were even mixed match. I mean, we styled this one into a T. Mm. All my men were in wingtips and seersucker suits and things of that nature. We had a procession. We actually marched in off of Lenox Avenue, down oh, our stairs. Wow. We had seating for the women. They got fans with the wedding uh, announcement on it. The men got pocket squares with Harlem Hypodastria and Broadway on it. So mm. we really did this. And that wedding cake was absolutely our wedding Gorgeous. cake. It was our beautiful wedding cake. We had a wedding singer, a guy in the backyard hey, playing the guitar, you know, wow. so we had, we had a true all-out wedding. And you're also doing eyewear now, is that? We did an eyewear line, yes. It, uh, we did a partnership with Fat Joe, one of our longtime clients from way back. Uh, his line was called Rebello, but it was under the 5001 umbrella, and it went on to be a part of our escape line, only sold in um, Bahamas. Okay, yes. excellent. And am I correct that you just shot your Christmas card and I wasn't I invited? I did, I yeah. did. Okay. Right. We are, we are, we call ourselves the first family of fashion. Okay. Now okay. there are some families out there, they do take their pictures and some of their fashions is fly. But we are all day, every day, fly family. So we earned the right to be the first fashion family, you know, and so each year we have been accustomed now to doing our holiday Christmas card and this year my niece Iconic Ash she Her really, name is actually Iconic? Well, her name is Ashley Muhammad. Okay. But uh, her, her her signature is okay. Iconic Ash and it's E-Y-E. -E. -E. Okay. And I'll let you all find her and hear her story because of how you spell iconic. It has to do with the I, and that's the only thing I'll give you. I love that. Um, but she created this year's um, scene, and with our publicist, uh, Gervell, they did it. They did it, and wow. I mean, our fashion from head to toe. There's no man that looks like a woman, there's no woman that looks like a man, but we're all <laughs> in the same look. Okay, really? oh, I love, wow. okay, now you got me. No, because I love a woman in a suit. I own oh. more suits. Oh my gosh, I love yeah, a woman so in a suit, I, I'm so I love that. I'm very happy with that, but I was actually happy with the part that just showed on the camera when it was just showing our intro of our holiday cards, but we really look mm. forward to it. I mean, we've done some really, really crazy things with top hats and, you know, all this little garbs and stuff like that, but this year we, we went straight back to we are the bosses because now we are owners of a, a custom brand, we are owners of a clothing boutique, we are owners of the clothing in the boutique, we are owners of eyewear, we have a whole brand character now, we have liquor. Mm -hmm. wow. Really? Yes. 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 What's H the name of it? HH, which is Harlem Habitat, uh -huh. but it's HH okay. Bespoke, uh -huh. because each bottom and bottle and each liquid in that bottle was custom mm. for that bottle. You know, so it's HH Bespoke Spirits. Okay, yes, so and is it okay. wines and, we, whiskey, and it's scotch gin, and cognac? Yeah. It's a gin, a rum, and a vodka. Okay. okay. We are sold now in Harlem in 23 different really? restaurants with signature cocktails. Okay. Wow. You know, we are in three different liquor stores in Harlem as well as Brooklyn Chop House. We're in Happy Cork in Brooklyn. We've crossed the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, Brooklyn gave us yeah, love. Spread right. love. Right. Away. You know? Yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, so we, we're we're looking we're looking we're looking for that is excellent. Yeah, so so nice. I see perfume in the future. Cologne. So we have a luxury cotton spray, which is right now. So our luxury cotton spray, it's called Sweet Harlem. Cotton spray. It's only for cotton, so don't go put mm. it on this good silk. <laughs> okay. It's, it's for cotton. Right. And one of the things that you can do with it, you can either put it on your clothes if you came in from smoking a cigarette mm -hmm. or anything else, uh, but you can also put it on your clothes as you bring it out of the washing machine and use it as a fabric softener as you put it into your dryer. Nice. Wow. Yeah. And, and where is that sold? That's sold in our, our boutique as well. Okay. Yes, Yes. I wish I had known that there would have been samples involved, people. Mm, yeah. I did not know this, okay? Correct. I did not know this. Yes, yes. Okay, well, then, oh my gosh, so much is going on. Yes, we, we are really, really, really going to be a brand. There's so much that we have happening. And they're still talking about your masquerade ball. I, they always mm -hmm. do. And it's always yeah. so fun. But this year, I will tell everybody... You don't want to miss this. When it when is the next one? Is it in this March? Year's Mar it's March 14th. It's March the second 14th. Saturday of each month, okay. uh, each March, each year. Um, and we found that better because of 
award ceremonies are still going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and one year we wanted to honor Bevy, and she couldn't arrive because of Essence was doing okay. one of the houses out there for the California thing. So we moved it to the second, and which is best. And um, this year we have somebody that's going to blow everybody's mind as our man of the year. That's all I was saying. Wow. Say. And do the, everyone dresses up in costume? Is there a theme? So, you know, it's a well, masquerade. So this year's 2020. Okay. And so all I have been telling everybody is I look forward to seeing what you will be wearing if you were Judy Jetson, George Jetson, Elroy Oh, Jetson. I know what I'm wearing. You know. I know what I'm wearing. Let me go. write the I mean, date it's down. it's futuristic. So yes. tell me what you want to do. Yes. Okay. March oh 2020. Oh, that sounds show, you, show you what you want to do. Yeah, show me what you want to do. Do you just come or is it invite? Only no, no, no. It is a gala we do every year. It's a fundraising gala uh, mm. sponsoring and benefiting one of our um, nonprofits, which is Take Care of Harlem. Okay. And then also we partnered up with my beautiful friend and sister, Dominique Jones, who runs Boy Harlem Boys and Girls Club. Okay. And so some of the proceeds do go to Harlem Boys and Girls Club, and then some go to Take Care of Harlem. And do you sell it by the ticket or by the table? We, no. So there is no table because I want to okay. dance. Mm -hmm. So don't come up in here, no five-inch shoes if you can't dance in it, but don't you come in them giant, those Chinese and Japanese flats either. Mm -hmm. no, okay. That will be not accepted. Oh, okay. But what we do not give tables, and we don't do bottle popping, because, okay. again, we are a classy, yeah, you know, so we want, you know, it's just classy, and it's yeah. fun, but you dance. Right, You know, right, Olivia right. Dope is always on the ones and twos. We okay. normally have the Rocking Walker Project. I don't know if you've heard them. They're out of um, Red Rooster, which is Marcus Samus's um, first group. I love them. They you know, also so they perform are, are at Melba's up. on Tuesdays yes. as well. Trusted Mike. Now, do you trust the mic on Tuesdays? I love them. If right, you trust yes, the mic I'm on Tuesdays. <laughs> if you trust the mic, <laughs> then I suggest you should come here. You know what? You know what? No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so uh, it is a thing where and the ladies and the men, they really pull their all out to do this because actually what they do is they look at us and see what we're where wearing. Do, where is it, Louis? It's at Riverside Church. Riverside Church. It's in their Church. grand ballroom. Okay. Yes. So really? This is going that to be our huge. third year hosting there. And uh, how do people get tickets? You can go online, which will, there'll be an e-bite. Um, okay. And, well, it should be done already. There'll be an Evite list where you get it there. Oh, you come into the store. We're now, for the first time, actually going to be selling tickets. Okay. At Harlem nice. okay. So All right. it just helps some people. We had an elderly lady last year. She was 72. She don't know nothing about no computer. She had an Obama phone, so she didn't know how to even get up on the phone. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of felt bad right. because she's like, well, I don't have no, I don't know how to do this. I got my cash right here. She pulled out a little paper clip with her money in a little bag. Paper clip. And we couldn't even give her a ticket, you know, so wow. it was things like that. So this year, my business partner, Cousin Shay, she actually has kind of changed things around. Okay. All right. I'm well, coming this year. If I'm well, in the United States, I'm telling you I'm coming. I will have you if as my If I'm guest. here, I am coming. Yes. Yes. She I travels will, the world. I would love to know, um, so I've never been inside of Harlem Haberdashery. Okay. And, like, it sounds like such an iconic place, like mm -hmm. a place where, because I always have visitors, you know, okay. throughout the year. And, like, I feel bad, like, oh, my God, this is a place that I should have been bringing people to all along. So what would you, what would be something to, for someone to look out for when they come into the store, like, well, so when you, something they can take back. Well, when you walk into the store first off, I, I always tell any of our family members, just a lot of people to come in first, because when they walk in, they're going to be, Mm -hmm. They mm. have no idea because I'm in the bottom, I'm in the parlor level of a brownstone and we have it set up like you're coming into our home. Mm -hmm. So it's like a living room experience mm -hmm. just with a lot of clothes, mm -hmm. you know, for my house a lot of shoes, you know, but for the most part when you come in, there's all kind of things. We are more set on ready to wear, um, so the, there's nice little t-shirts or nice little hats or uh, accoutrements for it's men from brooches and, and things of that okay. nature. Um, during so, ter certain seasons we have fascinators, you know, uh, turbans for the women, like during the holiday seasons when I normally will bring turbans in because that's when a lady might not get her hair done, mm. but she still needs to be at Sunday school on Sunday morning. So it's jewel turbans and things like that. But we have okay. different things and we make everything, you know. Okay, so, well I'm so excited for like the next visitors to come. I'm glad. We definitely I'm glad. Stop well, by. we might be relatives, so we'll talk about the camera. <laughs> oh, his name was Wells when he oh, saw I'm your Wells. name. Okay, oh wow. My name was Wells. All right, we will yes. talk yes. about this. Yes. <laughs> but talk about souvenirs. your background because I'm curious to know like this design, do you make clothing? Do you, like, what is your background? I'm just so let's see. I started sewing in sixth grade. Shut I up. was in sixth grade at a school in Seattle, and half the year you have home economics, and the other half you had tailoring. Well, my teacher was of a certain color, 
I call them WPs. And she didn't know how to cook or couldn't teach me how to cook. I have a southern black family. You can't mm. teach me how to cook. So what I used to do was sneak my mother's seasonings mm. and help her season the food to make her home happy when she got home. But then she would teach me how to sew. Wow. And so I started sewing in sixth grade. I went all the way through high school. I went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising on a uh, Susan, uh, Susan Lucci scholarship. Wow. And I graduated as a ladies' formal designer. Los Angeles. And yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 818 7th, uh, West 7th Street. That okay. was my old school. <laughs> Yes. So I graduated as a ladies' formal wear designer. So I was doing wow. wedding gowns and after five mm. gowns. And I just thought that the lady was always so fabulous when she left the house. Mm -hmm. And I used to watch my mother in her ultra sheer pantyhose with the seam up the back and mm. little pointy sling back. And I just thought, oh my gosh, if I could create a million of those ladies. And so I went into women's studies. But I have, I could do men if I had to. But for yeah. the most part, you know, I do the women. Wow. Yes. And so then you carry that on. But. Um, what is your thought about thoughts about um, like the television shows that they have on now today, Project One Way, or these competition yeah. shows? Are they real? Are we really yeah. getting something that is going to be used? To no, you know what? And I actually will say they are real. I'm very good friends with Christian Sariano mm -hmm. and also with Emil. Uh, another, I said Emil. Another young man that was on the show uh, and he came in second place. And his name skips me right now. I know you're but, talking about. I watched um, the show, but I'm just wondering. But I, I, I learned from them how real it really is. Yeah. It really is real. And there was some hard times and some a lot. Emilio, Emilio right. Sosa. That's his name. Mm -hmm. And there were some really hard times that they went through. And I think that the show is actually good. I used to actually set my DVR. But since I got a new cable box, it didn't record it anymore. Uh, right. I love Project Runway. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, but, Luis, I, I, I'm more disturbed when I see the... Um, the housewives of this and the the love and hip hop of this and mm -hmm. the reunion where so many of the young ladies are just and I will give it to the men mm -hmm. I the men that do the reunion when they come back Clean. oh my gosh mm -hmm. the men to I'm the to the T yeah. mm -hmm. yes but if I see one more naked body suit or one more onesie Boops. or one more cat suit that it's just so wrong on so many Asian levels <laughs> why why um, have we gotten to that point of how of naked can I be? Mm. I think that's it. Is that's that a trend it. where they have the entire breast out? You know, um, Le Impost, thank God for them back in the days on 8th Street. Uh, you know, we used to call mm -hmm. that Shuro back in the days down mm -hmm. on 8th Street. Le Impost made that first lavender with the rosettes and things for little Kim. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. since I guess she wore it, I guess everybody else thought, mm -hmm. you know, now's the time mm -hmm. for me well, to expose the breasts. Kim was back in the day. Why wear the onesies at the airport that are clearly pajamas? Oh. I'm sorry, at the I, airport? I've actually never even worn pajamas out my home. I know, but people yeah, do like, now. now. And they're That's wearing the slippers word. now. They're so cute, though. <sighs> For the little fur. Yes. You said the first slippers the are cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you see them and they you wear them. You should never have walking. a slipper. <laughs> slipper, which is going to be for your hot day to keep your toes <laughs> you're cool. Oh. But you're going to put some bear claw fur up on top of it. <laughs> I saw a girl with With your toes out. Yeah. Right. It, it, but just, the it doesn't fur. make sense. Now, see, I practical. think that if somebody is flying creative enough, if you took that and wore it in your early days of fall, again, before it. Halloween. Thick winter sock. Maybe a high sock. You know, give some type of flavor to it. Give a style to it. Why are you doing make it? it? Because we're sense. not wearing fur in the summer, so why are you wearing these fur claws? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I never understood that. Now, I don't do bathroom. I don't do them slippers and them things. I don't do no pajamas <laughs> at no airports. No. I think it's tacky so that is and it's a hey, What about the men with oh, the pop. socks and the slippers? Oh. When they do the, you know, Nike, the Nike mm -hmm. sandals, but they have on socks. Yeah, th those disappoint me, too. Okay. If, if you, if, I thought it was just me. No, it I thought it was a college me. thing. Though so they in college, no, they are wear grown men doing they this. wear slippers and they go to anywhere class, class and <laughs> no. stuff. Yeah, because they're cold. So what was yeah. the movie that it came from? I think it was either Boys in the Hood or was it? I don't one know. of those movies where oh, I wasn't checking for that. It first. was like a Snoop Dogg or something. And they had to sleep. You better stop. You know what? And that actually could be a West Coast thing because I'm from Seattle. So what? And trust me, when I use the word country. It doesn't mean that they came from down south. They just country. No. They just bumpkins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's a country behavior mm -hmm. when you wear white socks and some slippers, or when mm -hmm. you wear white socks and some colored shoes. Right. It's yes. just country. Yes. Because yes. It's, 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 it's lazy. Definitely a West yeah. Coast. You know. But for the thing, I don't know where that came from. I don't know why they're doing that. I wish that they would stop. Young. Some young men are not happy with their feet. 
Mm, that's what and I think. And so they will put on mm, socks. socks with the slipper, but if you're not happy with your feet wear to wear do the slipper with without socks, they're going to put the sneakers back on. Keep yes. Yes, because it's not cooler. Yeah. You got on socks. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, just and speaking of and speaking of sneakers and Nike, you guys actually delve into video and commercials and things. The Nike commercial with LeBron James. Yes, yes, yes. Love it, it when I first saw his series because he does a lot of little commercials. It is the funny, the funniest thing. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know y'all were a part of that. Mm -hmm. But he. He's an amazing actor. He doesn't know it yet. I don't think True. he. he I don't not, think he, he knows it yet. So well, I think yeah. now that he's doing his podcast, I think mm -hmm. he's finally mm -hmm. kind of delving into getting closer and more comfortable with being in front of the camera. But yeah, no. Tell um, us about it. We worked with that on a, with a young lady named Rachel Johnson, who mm -hmm. is a stylist, and Rachel is also the same young lady that brought us the cover of GQ for Colin Kaepernick. You know, mm -hmm. so she is the young lady that said, "Hey." I know can nobody else do this but y'all. This is what I'm looking for. What do you think? And Guy Wood just went into that lab up there in the Bronx and came out with a masterpiece. And the clothing was impeccable. <laughs> Everything. I think we we made so many things the for that shoe. commercial. Yeah. Ooh. But we had so much fun with that. And then <laughs> Iconic Ash, she went off to do her branch with Nike for a, women, a women's shoe. So we, wow. we did a lot of things. It was fun. It was fun. Wow. Mm. And moving forward um, in Harlem, are mm -hmm. you seeing? Um, uh, the, we, we often talk about how the mom and pop stores mm -hmm. are now going and we got the Victoria's Secrets and the Whole Foods and the Olive Gardens mm -hmm. and are, are you seeing a different type of person coming in your store? Is it beneficial to you? Is it kind of leveling out now? Is it... Normally the folk that shop on 125th are mm -hmm. not the ones that come into my boutique. Okay, who does? Uh, the people that come into my boutique are those that want to have a difference when they step out their house. Got it. Uh, the people that shop on 125th, it's nothing against them, but mm -hmm. this sweater was made 45 times. Mm -hmm. So now I gotta go to a party and there might be two other of you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw my red glass on. I would say they're on trend people, right? They're, no, they're, they're the trendy. Trendy people. They're, they're, trendy they're, people. they're, trendy. they're, they're, okay. they're following trends. Yeah, they're following okay. trends right now. And so it's a different uh, story. Then. I have to blame some of us for those outlet stores mm -hmm. on 125th mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because those that love Woodbury Common and all mm -hmm. those other outlet places mm -hmm. when they get to the cash where they say, would you like to leave your zip code for, you know, reference of where you mm -hmm. came from? Mm -hmm. Once they started seeing all the zip codes with 10027, 10026, 10031, wow. oh, we Harlem need must there. need an outlet. Yeah. So let's give them the outlet gap. Let's give them the outlet banana republic. I don't want wow. no outlet banana republic. I got cash longer than them. I don't either. Right. You know, right. so right. I want the real things up there. So those uh, most of those places have been closing down, but then those that are surviving are those outlet stores because they have bigger money making people behind them. Mm -hmm. You know, but the smaller places that we used to have where they had some good places, they were forced out. They were they were forced out because the rent was going up higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know. Talk about survival in Harlem, the new Harlem, because I don't know, because you know we do film. I remember a film called The Changing Face of Harlem by Sean Beatty. She's actually a Harlemite as well. Mm -hmm. She did 10 years documenting Harlem as it changed. So today we have the marches, the protests, no, say no to so hard and everything mm -hmm. like that. Correct. We, we, in, 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 back in the days we had the white flight. Today they're back, it reversed. They're back mm -hmm. here in Harlem. The mom and pops, like she said, is no longer, they're moving now. Survival in Harlem, mm -hmm. I think, would be challenging. But I think also, well, you tell me, but I think because you have such an amazing niche that they cannot duplicate but you Correct. tell me and yeah. there's a couple of other others up there you have princess jenkins from the brownstones yes, you, know, princess. You, know, you, have, you have places like us i would say mm -hmm. us not just me i would say us that are doing things that they know they cannot find i cannot. call princess's shop every church lady's heaven it is you know if you need a shoulder pad it is, it is. you got it the, the high low hat, thing over you got it if yes. you need a bell sleeve yes. for the choir yes. thing, you got it you yes. know so mm -hmm. princess survives because there's nobody else like that around mm -hmm. yes we survive in harlem because there's nobody else like us you know nobody can actually make a suit in a day like we can wow you know nobody can act, so you know we do free alterations you know so we give you perks you know for coming in there because i can't expect you to be a size less than a two, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. because I have a size four on the rack, you're not gonna be able to get it? No, let me do my complimentary alterations for wow. you. So this is made to fit do you. Do you give me Harlem or do you give me me? Do you I give, give me? So I give you what you ask for. Okay. And then what my job is to 
when I hear and listen to what you say you want, then my idea is to create that for you, but done that nobody else has done. You know, I also find happiness down in the upholstery department at Mood, you know, and make my jackets for parties because mm -hmm. everybody else is so busy going up into these Zars and everything getting velvets. H&M Zars. was done seven years ago when I did that for Tommy Hilfiger's birthday. And <laughs> Pete, you know, so we're done with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would give you what you're asking for, but just add our twist to it. So what it's was always going to be so hard. On. Right, so then what was the key thing that's, that uh, made others attract to you? I know the 5,001. Correct. So what was mm -hmm. it that um, made everyone else jump on it? Like, you need to go there. What, what, what initially was that one particular outfit or was that one particular client that said, this is a place to be. Here it is now, hence, mm. 10 years later, keep coming back here. We watched the transit. We, you, you guys started before hip hop mm -hmm. even emerged. Correct. We were already we doing, were doing this yes. fashion mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. then. I mean, you know, we had Dapper Dan, but yes. we had you too, 5001. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So what was it? You know, I think that most of, well, we really opened up the store for the folks that are not near us. You know, uh, I did Chris Brown for the MTV Awards, and he wore all white, and they had him flying through the air in mm -hmm. this white suit. I mean, and I had so many people from North Dakota, South Dakota, wow. Nebraska, how can I get that suit? How can I get this suit? Where did that suit come from? Wow. You know, and since it was a 5,001 flavor suit, you know, people followed the celebrities, and they see what they're wearing, mm -hmm. and when they bless us by putting our names in the credits, that's how most people find and out I about it. You. you know, And right. that's how a lot, of, a lot of the word got out, but again, you have a family-owned boutique with nine to 11 different characters and personalities under one umbrella, and we also all have different phones and social media. And mm. so people are watching Ashley, but she'll, they'll see Ashley's aunt, that style dog Lou come through, you know, or they'll see Guy, her uncle, come through with this fly denim jacket with lined and fur, you know, so they want, well, where is all these people? Where are they go? Mm. So that's what really gets a lot of people in, because they really want to come and meet us, you know, mm -hmm. and we are truly a card. We, we really, we're up for so many different reality shows, but when reality shows, we had to have it real. Right. I didn't want cameras in my face. I want cameras in the corner so you can catch me. Because once you put a camera in my face, I'm, I'm going to It changes shy. everything. You know, yeah, but if you yeah. put it up in that corner, you can't help but get everything mm, we true. said. You know, so people kind of see our, our IG stories and they, they see us and they're like, I want to meet these people. We get a lot of folks. Cool. We have a lovely family dynamic and we have a wonderful publicist, Kim um, Kimberly Wilson, who just gets us out there. You she know, you mentioned, and I'm going like, to get back, but you mentioned something about your whole business model. You said there's nine different people here in individuality, but yet you're operating on one um, umbrella. I'm Correct. thinking about Wu-Tang Clan. They did the same thing. Mm -hmm. They had all of the different artists. You had Method Man, you had, you know, RZA, you had, you had Old DB, but yet they were still connected. Correct. Correct. Power. Correct. Smart. It is. Um, some would say that we was crazy. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes crazy will come out for the yeah. good. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. will really come out for the good. Mm -hmm. So, moving forward mm -hmm. and talking about the new year. Can you say you want Oh, do we Hello. have callers? You oh know, we got so caught up on Lewis. We and love him. Oh you are like a no. Oh my no, God. I'm not but I got so many of things. <laughs> Forgive us, caller. Uh. Call If there is a caller, please. Hello and welcome to Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Question or comment? Oh, uh, hello. Hello. Uh, uh, hello. This is Sheila. Sheila. Ah. Sheila. No, Sheila, Sheila is one of our How members here who's not oh. here. Very well. Thank you, Sheila. Hi, we, Sheila. We miss you terribly. Yes. I'm sorry I'm not there, but I was tempted to call because I understand that you're talking about clothing. Yes. And I was wondering, being though I can't see the show where I'm at, I'm in the mall, <laughs> do you have anything for seasoned women who are queen size? Seasoned women who are and queen she can dress. Well, to add to that, hello, Sheila, and welcome to the show. Thanks for calling in. Yes, we do. Uh, we do more custom. I think that any young lady and every young lady that wants to make a statement when she leaves her home should have her clothes custom made for mm. her because our ladies come from four foot seven to six mm. foot three wow. you know she could be a size 14 or she could be a size 22 or even a size 2 I think that is done more custom so we do more custom with our ladies stuff in our boutique yes yeah because well, Sheila, Sheila we miss you dresser. terribly we wish you a speedy recovery 
And uh, for our viewing audience watching, Sheila will be back with us in January when we will be doing Takeover Tuesday again. Big kiss, Thank Sheila. You. Love you. I love you. Okay. okay. Thank yes. you. And get well soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Too. Thank you. So, bye -bye. what I'd like to do now, mm -hmm. I'd like to say, because this will be our last time together before the new year, I'd like to say what your wish is for the new year. I Personally, Ooh. I want to know if I should be praying for you for, um, for the store to be larger or another haberdashery too. Do no. we want a haberdashery too? No, no we do no. not. And I want you to stay where you are so then I can't make it bigger. <laughs> we so okay, love there you go. One there, haberdashery. Okay. I just wow. did. See, that's why we have to be on one accord. Yes. That's why the Bible says that. I just can't that. see another place. I can't even see it in my home Seattle calling mm. it Harlem haberdashery. Mm. Now there could be stores that are in different locations that Harlem haberdashery can have pieces in, but as far as locations there should only be one and that's right there too. I love it. Lenny. So what would you see for the future for you personally or the store my or both? My future personally just to stay healthy mm -hmm. and loving with a loving relationship with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh. Mm. That's all you I took have. my answer, but okay, I can, <laughs> well, we can have it can too. Watch. Yes, he Thank is the father of God, all. he <laughs> is. He is. Is that it? That is. That, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, okay. my, my, I, I, we've been so blessed. I think that my liquor to grow to be found in Seattle, maybe since they haven't picked it up yet, maybe. I think yeah. you should have one more perfume. Okay. And it should be called Selenia. Oh. Selenia. That's my that's name. That's a good name for oh, a that's perfume. Dope. Yeah, my name so is Selenia. So that means it has nice to be pretty. Yeah, um, but I gotta tell you, strong. yeah, I want it more masculine yeah, yeah, it than flowery. I, I, it has to be it got, strong. It's, it's mask. Yeah, it's not a s old lady. Excuse me, older women, because I'm old. Yeah, it's not. No, I want it, but it's called Selenia. Okay, and we'll talk we'll about it. Okay, we can. I okay. want to. I, like I want that. And we got a great maker. May we even go for maker. men and women. It could be, you know, we could call it Lou. Oh, true. There we go. That man from women. That is for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Louis. You know, yeah. Yes. All right, Nareh, what is your wish and dream for the future? Um, for, for the future or for into the new year is to definitely be um, healthier. Um, been battling with some sciatica pain, so you know, so just to get healthier and to for my flourish, my business to flourish. Correct. All right. Yes. Excellent. Veronica? Um, what is that? <laughs> I was going to say world peace. No, uh, but I, 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 I uh, uh, successful film festival year this year. It's Great. coming up. Yeah. Submissions are open. Everybody, are they open? They're where open do they now. Go to? And they to can say go where they the should go to filmfestival.com and uh, just uh, submit your film on Film Freeway and also the Public Media Awards that we're doing, and then also the Tech Expo. So I really hope that everyone gets involved because it's a venue that we created for you, for you to have. Does it have select um, where if I want to enter something I shot on my phone, if I mm -hmm. want to enter a documentary? Documentaries, uh, you, but, it, but, uh, it, but it lets you they can enter anything. anything that you wanted. And one of the things that I like is the fact that we are all uh, professionals in our own right, meaning filmmaker, I shoot, I edit, I uh, love editing, but um, so we can see. Mm -hmm. differently and so we're looking at your film in a whole different uh, uh, aspect and then not only that we kind of like change the criteria in the sense of what they have out there so that you can come in because like I always say why should your film you only showed it once sit on a shelf because it's not dated. You know, everybody has their favorite film. So, you know, I think it should be shown over and over and over again. So there's a rebirth of that. And so one of the things we like to do is to bring it in. I want everyone to see you, see your work. You know, that this is the home. So successful year next nice. year with the People's Film Excellent. Festival. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I myself feel, and I've been saying this for about two months, next year is going to be something very different for me. I have no idea what that means, so I'm a little anxious, a little nervous, and extremely excited. Um, I don't know if that is entitling a book, because mm. I've had so many strangers come up to me now and say, that's time for me to do. I started writing a play that I'm now thinking about going back and even trying to do that. Um, I've had several people look at it and find it very exciting. Um, there's nothing like that. I don't know if that's a podcast. I don't know what that'll be. 
in, that, that's it right now. That's yeah, it right now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I'm not sure what that will be, but I myself too um, want to increase my walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. He's just working miracles that I can't begin to explain, and I am just so, so grateful, which I think is the key to uh, everything, is gratitude. He can't give Correct. you more till he's sure you're grateful for what there he's given you. And we are so excited. In, uh, I will be at the Miss Universe pageant in Atlanta. Tyler Perry will be um, graciously um, working with us. Yeah. So please, on December 8th, be sure to look at Fox. I, again, I'm not sure I'll be co-hosting, but I will be doing the choreography and backstage screaming at the girls, which is what I do best. That's why Nat lets me do this. <laughs> All the little ladies walking around there. Right? <laughs> little, little, little. Um, we are so excited. Louis, thank you so much you. when thank you agreed you. to be here. I was so, so happy. I was honored. I was absolutely Yay. honored. Thank you so much. And Naray, we are so happy you made it. You are such a busy, busy, busy person. <laughs> and Veronica, the film festival. I'm already so excited. Yes, I'm yes. so excited. And new host for us. We love it. Love it. Where's the deadline for the uh, submissions? We got time. We this regular submissions now. It's next February, okay. February, and then March. And selections is in March. Thank you very and much. And we didn't talk about that beautiful family. I press. know, but I think we're out of time. We're done. Yeah. I think. Aren't we? <laughs> Look we're at the time. 18, 19. Yes. Seconds. There we go. We love you. Thank you very much. You've been watching 30 Frames a Second Takeover Tuesday. We will see you in January. Please stay tuned. Love you, Nat. Great show, guys. Great, that was Great show. It, it goes so fast, doesn't it? It went so fast, right? Right? But you're like, you're like so amazing. Like you can say one thing to you and you just poof. And it just opens you're up. Easy, and it takes some people to another drag.